Just a few years ago, when talking about the private U.S. rocket industry, Musk, SpaceX, and Blue Origin by Jeff Bezos came to mind. But now, when SpaceX continues to be known in all countries of the world for its success and dedication, in the latter part, people will ask, Jeff who? What Blue Origin? Clearly, Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin completely lost their way to orbit. Well, hang on right till the end of this video as we rip off Blue Origin's humiliation sources and reasons line by line, word by word. I'll also tell you some amazing facts you might not know about Jeff Bezos' multi-billion dollar Blue Origin company. But first, let's take a look into Blue Origin. This is an American-owned aerospace exploration technology company that specializes in various technical niches that facilitate space exploration and its requirements, such as rocket manufacturing, handling space communication, and provision of extensive research. Blue Origin was founded in 2000 by Bezos, the former CEO of Amazon. It's the oldest privately funded aerospace and private space flight company in the United States. Blue Origin's company activities majorly incorporate the great Nicholas Tesla letter ideas and coincidentally, the owner of Blue Origin, Jeff Bezos, happens to be a lover and graduate of physics much like Nikola Tesla. The Blue Origin logo that compromises a feather is the symbol of perfection of flight, yet the company has yet to orbit with a work ethic that has so far revolved around lethargy. More badly, all of the company's major projects were completely derailed and delayed by decades. Anyway, to keep in the good mood, let's start with the only thing Blue Origin has achieved. New Shepard with brief and ventured flights to the edge of space. After 15 years of development, Blue Origin's space tourism rocket made its crude launch debut last year with Bezos flying alongside a heron of the space community, Wally Funk, as well as his brother, Mark Bezos, and a paying customer. However, Bezos didn't even get the glory of being the first billionaire to ride his own rocket to space. Just two weeks before Bezos flew to the edge of space this summer, Richard Branson completed suborbital flight in his own space plane with Virgin Galactic. The company's also looking to ramp up flights to space this year. Company officials have said they remain on schedule to begin commercial human suborbital missions before the end of the year. Regardless, SpaceX is definitely on the other level. SpaceX is the only private company that offers trips to orbit. Besides sending NASA astronauts to the ISS, the company completed the first ever all-civilian flight to orbit last September, taking a billionaire and three of his chosen crewmates on a three-day trip. This year, the company successfully took four paying customers on a flight to the International Space Station, which orbits about 200 miles above Earth. Now Jeff has another painful story about his rocket engine. So far, BE-4 has completely disappeared after more than five years of delay. Jeff Bezos was promising a relatively low-cost, high-performing engine, but that was just an empty promise. Production started in 2011, and he promises it would be ready to fly in 2017, but so far, production's been unbelievably stalled and shows no signs of stopping. Blue Origin is unlikely to deliver two flight-ready versions of the BE-4 rocket engine to ULA before at least the end of 2022. This increases the possibility that the debut flight of ULA's much-anticipated new rocket, Vulcan, will definitely slip into 2023. What a spectacular troll from Bezos. The delayed development of the BE-4 has become an increasingly popular target. In contrast, within just two years of production, SpaceX achieved production of 100 Raptor engines for the Starship launch vehicle. That is a desirable number to challenge any opponent. But not stopping at Raptor 1 to serve the purpose of colonizing Mars, SpaceX is ramping up production of the insane powerful Raptor 2 engine at a dizzying rate of one per day. And those are just numbers for the Raptor. I haven't even mentioned the Merlin engine that's used on the Falcon 9. And since we're talking of delay, the 98-meter-tall New Glenn by Amazon, which is designed to carry 50 tons of payload to low Earth orbits with reusable boosters, was planned to take flight by the end of 2021. But now it won't be entering the sky before 2023 and will even probably slide further into more coming years. 
Named after the astronaut John Glenn, the plan with New Glenn is to ferry people to space as well in the long run, and the boosters would be landing on a ship, much like Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy do. New Glenn has had a head start, but spent a long time at the Gratitum Lane. New Glenn will never catch up with their competitors. The currently active version, Falcon 9 Block 5, has flown 100 missions, all full successes. Compare this to Rocket Lab's Neutron. It would launch after New Glenn, but I have a bit more faith in Rocket Lab to have reduced the cost of building Neutron to the point they can afford a few launches without first stage reuse to demonstrate value to the market and get things worked out. Blue Origin, on the other hand, is taking the old space approach of do all the design before bending a single piece of metal, spend as much money as you need to make it perfect, expect everything to work correctly the first time. Thus, if they run into problems, they'll take much longer to recover. It's an uncertain future. But Blue Origin has managed to snag some contracts, but they have yet to execute on pretty much anything that requires more than the suborbital joyride. One of them is the NASA Artemis contract. Perhaps none of us have forgotten the biggest shame of Blue Origin. Another of SpaceX's monsters, the Starship, beats out Blue Origin for NASA spacecraft despite Jeff's attempts to sue multiple times. NASA regarded SpaceX's management as outstanding, while Blue Origin and its partners were just judged very good. As fine as it may sound, Jeff's company would still have to escape the shadow of Elon SpaceX before gaining anything here. Finally, the Blue Origin has another project we don't talk about often, Orbital Reef. First announced in October 2021, Orbital Reef is a proposal from a team led by Blue Origin and Sierra Space. The space station would offer spaces for use, lease, or ownership that are open to people worldwide. It offers large earth-facing windows with quarters for both living and working. However, Blue Origin could still find indirect competition from SpaceX in this area. Elon Musk's company will use its Falcon 9 rocket and Crew Dragon capsule to help Axiom Space build its own private space station. The company could establish an independent space station as early as 2027. Importantly, NASA has already awarded Axiom Space $140 million. Axiom plans to build modules that will connect to the ISS. When the ISS retires, Axiom will then detach its modules and turn them into a free-flying space station. Axiom has began manufacturing those modules, including the enormous windows that will make up an observation deck. The company plans to launch and connect the first habitable module to the ISS by 2024. This is definitely not an easy piece of cake for Jeff. After all this, hopefully Blue Origin and Jeff Bezos will be back on the way soon, but honestly, I've been saying this for a long time. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section. Everyone's support is motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.